All right, so I want to give an update. So this video is gonna cover like everything until the, it starts snowing. So I just wanna show you the setup I have here. Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to another vlog day. All right, so I got the garage optimized to how I think I'm gonna like it. So I ended up moving the shelf over there from its original position right here and ended up tucking the, the you know, the snowblower rig, the cab rig right here. And then in the front lines is the plow rig. So there's so much room here to play. So a year ago with this setup, um, the car was a lot closer here and I didn't clean the car, you know, around the car out very well. This year it has been completely cleaned out and uh, yeah, much better setup. So we got the car. I got the nose of it pushed all the way and all the way forward there. I think the goal of, of this is to eventually have that in the other side. So I wanna get like a bunch of this cleaned up um, it's a total mess right now because I completely cleaned this area to where it's perfect and shoved everything extra over there, as you can tell. Um, that's going to be done here soon, and then this one's going to be done here soon. So um, those two will be out of here soon. Um, that one, I'm debating on doing an engine swap or... But, I mean, technically, I want to get that engine running. If I like the engine, the only reason why I wouldn't like it is because I'm not a huge fan of the starter generator rigs. They start up quiet and nice when they're running nice, but this one's actually a uh, starter starter. So it's like almost like the ST series. So it's a 13 horsepower. So if it runs great, then I'll do it. But um, there's a lot of work that it needs. And I don't know if I don't feel like it, it's gonna get engine swapped, but yeah, this is a totally a vlog video, a talking video. If this is not something that you wanna continue watching from here then this is definitely not for you but anyway i have a little bit of things to do um so anyway with that being speaking i have a ton of room here so i think i mentioned that um the layout of these is it's as you can tell it's raining right now so i give it two more weeks or a month and uh, it's gonna be snowing here soon so my plan is to have this snowblower rig in the front line. So I'm calling this the front lines and then I'm calling this the backup. So I think what's gonna go on is that the snowplow is always gonna be in the front lines, but the only time that this will be in the front lines is if we get one of those major snowstorms, those record breaking snowstorms, um, then I'll definitely put this thing first just in case the windrows end up being halfway up. Um, we haven't had where I'm located because I'm so close to the ocean. We don't usually get, you know, big snowstorms like that, but we've have gotten a, a snowstorm that was a few feet. We've gotten some that are five or six feet. So they're there. We just haven't gotten them in a long time. So at least since I was in school, so it's been a while, but this thing's pretty set up. I think I'll talk about this real quick. Um, I kind of ended the video at night with this, but um, I got another video coming out where I'm going to replace this plow. Potentially, I don't know, it's on there and it will work fine, but I want to replace it with the nice one that I have. Um, I'm going to measure this plow. If this is a smaller one, then I'm definitely putting my bigger one on there. Um, I got skinnies with ch chains and double weights on it. And uh, this thing kind of just bought this and it's been just so nice. Um, I do got to add fluid to that transaxle, but... I'm going to be taking that off here shortly and putting the back blade back on it. And I was very scared that I wouldn't have enough room because that's as close as I've ever would want that. 
Um, I like to have a buffer room. I don't know, I could probably get a couple inches closer, but I would ideally like to not get any closer than that. And then over here, I just don't know where the three point hitch is. It's probably gonna stick out here. So I definitely want enough room to walk. And then this is probably as far back as I would want because I can get into here very nice. So I think that's fine. Um, so anyway, yeah, I wanna add uh, this little snippet to this video. So this is kind of like prepping for um, winter, this video. So I'm gonna try to record everything that I do in here and we're definitely not gonna pile anything on top of the car. <laughs> I think I did that last winter. Uh, I got a few comments and a few people that, that see my videos that I see in person definitely were cringing on that. So um, yeah, it needs a paint job. So there hasn't been a huge concern about putting things on there obviously not denting it but there's no dents in this car so it's fine but she's been babied for the last 25 years that we've owned it so <laughs> um yeah definitely definitely doesn't get driven a lot so and there's a lot that i would love to do this car that maybe i'll be able to own this car soon enough it is my father's so anyway um yeah let's get to what i want to do here so i kind of just released a video on this um, actually it came out today and, uh, the wiring the cab up. So there's a few more things that I want to do here. So one of them is I need camera spots. So I got this right here. This is the thread pattern on a tripod mount. And what I want to do is mount two of these. I have another one kicking around somewhere that was on there and I don't know anymore, but I definitely want to, f to figure out about putting one maybe here for a 360 camera. So that would be easy. And then I want to put one in the back corner here, sticking down and having a GoPro or the phone um, so you can see out there. So let's get into doing that. Um, so what I'm going to use for the phone, I have a specific mount for the GoPro, but what I want to use is this right here. So... Um, I have one that's actually not even used yet. So I gotta find my other one of this because I think I'm gonna mount it here. I, I was thinking about in there somewhere, but I think right here would be perfect. And then I could see all the way around. Um, I just had it. Is it this bag? Nope. Oh, it's this bag right there. Can you see it? Right here. So this is one that's not even opened yet. So I think, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think that's what I have on here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that part fell off, but that's the part that I have. Okay, so I have another one. So I'm thinking maybe we'll just leave this one. And what I'm thinking about doing is doing like that. Actually, I wonder, wait, there's some here. Hold up, maybe that will work. <laughs> um, so it's quarter by 20 is what these are. Now, let me get you one so just open this so so these are quarter 20 so you just get a quarter 20 bolt and boom and you have a amount I'm I'm so I was gonna drill a hole through the cab, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing that there's some in here. Got a hole drilled. Hopefully you've been seeing that.
Definitely a 9 16th, but. Or a 7 16th, sorry. Which actually. I just found. Let's see how this mounts up. All right, let's turn it around. See, I think I did it backwards. Oh, oh well. Oh, it's a little tight for the phone. Yeah, I might have to double nut that. I can't see what you guys are seeing, but Good for you guys. What's that? Oh yeah, that's way better. Oh yeah, that's way better. I mean on here it looks like you guys are seeing more up here. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. I wonder. Oh, oh you are in Y. What do you guys look like if you're doing that? If you're zoomed in. You guys looking that better? I'm just relying on you guys getting pinched up against there for your stability. Well, that'd be pretty, that's a pretty cool Hopefully that's a pretty cool angle for you guys. Um, I really can't, I don't know, I can't really do much. You'd probably want to be on wide angle. I don't know. You guys tell me down in the comments um, how it would fare. 
Look at that. Woo. And the back lights are just killer. But yeah, I don't know. That's definitely what I wanted to do. I definitely wanted a camera so you could see all of this without being on my head. Because I think on my head, first of all, I don't think I'll have clearance. Um, and second of all, uh, yeah, first of all, I don't think we have clearance and that's end all. So I think the other way I would have to face it into my face. And I don't know, that would be a pretty good one. Um, I, I'll definitely try to have uh, a suction cup on here. I can do that too. Um, but next is to do the, the, the one for the 360 camera. Um, I got that in my car actually that I can go grab and we'll see how that looks. We'll put it, first of all, we'll mount some, we'll see if we can mount it right here for now. You know, turn it on, see if that's a good spot, maybe move it all around and figure out a pretty good place. And then once it's all figured out, and by the way, this isn't, this is going to get like taped up here like this, like all this is still, I haven't touched it yet. Um, so, but yeah, we'll get the 360 camera moved all around and, uh, see how, you know, where, or how we'll like the 360 camera. Um, but you know, the point of this is, uh, to, to have more angles and I want to start posting on TikTok. So I haven't done that yet. Um, I've kind of just been, I don't know. I don't want to call myself a lazy YouTuber, um, because I'm doing a lot of work for you guys, but when it comes to posting to places, definitely lazy because uh, <laughs> um, I only post on YouTube. So, but yeah, I'm just trying to keep you, you know, kind of put my thoughts out, you know, talk my thoughts, talk through my thoughts here. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, I want to go upstairs, grab my GoPro, kind of do the suction cup mount and see how that will look for you guys. Um, also throw the GoPro back here, see how that looks. Um, and then get the 360 camera, see how that looks. But um, I wanna play around with views. I, I can tell you what a lot of these older generations, I don't wanna call them boomers, cause that's just not what they are. But you know, a lot of, a lot of these older generations that did things, you know, they know what they're doing. They they did this way before this technology. They were doing this serious stuff way, way before um, technology was around. And, uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of James's like old content that he posted like 10 or 12 years ago. Um, at least that's what the timestamps say on YouTube. Like, you know, and he's kind of still doing that to this day. Um, he's still just putting the camera down I mean, last winter when I was trying to purchase a loader off of him, um, he called it the Roper loader. What, you know, what he, when I tried purchasing that off of him, you know, we were still in the winter season and he, he was still put, putting the camera on like a block wall he had, a retaining wall. And I'm like, dude, I will buy you the $20 head strap that it is. He has a GoPro, which is the hardest part. A lot of people see the, the a lot of older people see the price of a GoPro, which is the equivalence of a, of a tractor. You know, you could buy a tractor for the price of the GoPro you're buying, but um, he already has the GoPro, which is the hardest part for these older generations to understand is like, he has a GoPro, I'll buy him the $20 head strap. You put that on there, you're game over, man. It is perfect. It's a huge game changer just to get the uh, head strap. I mean, it's $20 kit comes with a, a, a hat, it, you know, it goes on the brim of your hat and then it comes with a head strap. It's 20 bucks. It's no money. I mean, it's money you shouldn't be fussing over. It's $20. I mean, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I have, I bought three, I'd buy three or four of them at a time because I just, I break the brim hat ones and then I'd lose the, the head strap. So I have like two of them floating around right now. Actually, I, I think I just found my third one. Um, that I bought a while ago, but they wore, they wear out easy. So I just buy a bunch of them because I know I'm going to go through them and I, I lend a lot. I don't use my GoPros a lot. Uh, the, the season that really eats up my GoPro time is the winter time. And I invest in a lot of the, the GoPro stuff that makes them better in the winter. Um, and then I barely use them in the summer. So I usually lo loan them out a lot. 
of my GoPro stuff. So a lot of stuff gets lost here and there. So I'm always purchasing stuff, but um, yeah, during the winter, I usually hold on to them and don't loan them out. So because it's my busy season with them, um, I'm actually thinking about switching over to a different brand, but I, I thought about it. It's going to be all the same stuff, but um, it looks like it would be a little better in low light, which is usually the season that I use them in is when it's dark out. So I might, um, might do that. So I don't know. I'm just so hev heavily invested in GoPro that I, I probably just won't switch at this point. Um, but yeah, anyways, anyways, um, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go get the stuff and then come back. I'm going to look at how this footage is coming out. Um, and, uh, and let me do another, you know, zoomed in part of it. I don't know what one time zoom is, but you know, and you know, we'll try to figure out the best way. And like, I let's end that train of thought. A lot of people don't buy the, the, the necessary things when filming. And I want to, what the big thing I want to do is be different and give you guys like go out of the way and put the camera in the corner of the cab. And, and I just want to put it on the windshield and just give you guys different perspectives of doing this. And, you know, a lot of people don't do that and they don't, you know, I, I see almost zero videos of people doing some good in-depth snow blowing with a Haven. Like I've been trying, I've been eating all the content that's available on these Sears with the, the Haven and it's very little that you see. And the ones you do see are people like James and uh, some other people, but they only put the camera down and their whole goal. And I think this is what differs between them and myself is their whole goal is to get the driveway done. I don't know if that just means they have work the next day that they need to get it done. Um, but it's get the driveway done, record what you can. For me, it's record is the the ultimate goal. If the driveway doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. You know, I'd, I'd rather record first, then get the driveway, worry about the driveway. Um, I, I've, I've been in very little scenarios where I need to get the driveway done and not worry about the camera. Very little. I mean, last year, uh, that was just not the case. Last year, it was the whole point of cl driveway clearing was to record it. The stuff that I am recording, like, the stuff's been done. People are like, oh, I've been there, done that. And it, it, it's true, sure. Many people, I mean, you got to think these tractors have been out for 50 plus years. I'm sure everyone's done a little bit of everything, you know, especially in that time frame. But no one's recorded it. That's the thing. Like to find these cabs is hard. And, you know, I have to give it props to James. I think it's just because he's been doing it for so long. He has two of these things. And, you know, I've only ever seen, I've only been able to see two of these for sale and I bought one of them. That's this one. Uh, you know, I let one slip away because it was in New York, which to me is just unfathomable now because I can do that kind of trip now, but I will never let another one go. Uh, if I see another cab, I'm buying it and that will be a dang sure insurance for that because I think I'm going to do what James is trying to do he's trying to he has one on his his snowblower rig and he's he was telling me i don't know if he's told youtube yet but he wants to put one on a plow rig so he has two and he's able to do that so that's really cool um but yeah if i find another one i'm definitely grabbing and i want to do the same thing put it on a plow rig i don't know how um convenient it would be to have it on a plow rig because you know you got a lot of things protruding into the cab so especially with the lift and lower i don't know how that would go um, it makes sense here because the lift and lower is here. Um, so it's easy to do in a cab scenario, but the lift and lower on a plow would be in here somewhere. And I just don't know how that would go. So, which reminds me, I need to take this one, this bracket off. There's no reason for this to be here. Um, it's, I thought it was missing the other one. So especially on James, on his, he has this bracket in here and uh, this bracket allows or pinches the hood so it doesn't sway back and forth. But this one only has the one. I believe if I'm right, these have to be unscrewed. I don't, I don't think they just come out. I think they have to be unscrewed out of here. Um, I don't know if that's from the inside or the outside, but yeah, so. 
yeah, on the outside. So I'm gonna get this bracket off. It doesn't need to be here, so. But anyway, I will go get that, enough chatting. I will go get that and, uh, you know, um, do the other angles. <laughs>
So, you know, I tried it in different places, hoping to find the right one. I think the GoPro being there is good. So if I have my phone up in the corner there, we'll have the GoPro there and 360 up there. Um, and then when I'm just doing the all around content, just a quick one, we can do GoPro in that corner and the 360 up there. Um, and the reason why I don't want my phone in there a lot is because I'm hoping to do some time lapses outside of the cab there. So yeah, I don't want it to uh, be stuck in the cab. So probably the first few storms will have it all in there. But anyway, I'm gonna have to come back to this in a couple days. Um, looks like I gotta get another one to put through here if that ends up being location or maybe on the side or on the hood here or something, I don't know. But yeah, I gotta reconfigure this. Um, so if you if you buy a GoPro, um, you know, um, if you buy one of these and you're like, oh, what's the best settings? Literally just type in YouTube, you know, best GoPro settings. And that's what I do. And, I'll, you know, they go to step by step and you'll just go through the settings and set it to what they have and uh, run it a few times, see if you like it and then go from there. Did the same thing for my 360 camera. Um, so make sure, like I have the silicone case on the lenses and then I have this felt case around the whole thing. Make sure you keep those lenses protect, pr protected. You get a little scratch on there, you're gonna see it. And it's gonna be 360, so one side's gonna look really good, then when you 360, the other side will look like crap and you'll know what side's facing what. So make sure you keep that protected. And then, uh, yeah, that's all my stuff for now. But yeah, I'll catch back up to you when I get that. And uh, I'm gonna go chuck this into the video editor and see how that looked and see how you guys looked up in the corner there too so i'll get this cab pushed away and uh, i'll come back to you on a you know dark rainy night again in the future all right so i haven't caught up with you guys in a little bit but i'm going to continue with uh with this prepping for winter or whatever um i kind of kind of forget where i left off there but i think i did some footage and uh i think it turned out pretty good um I think the next thing that actually, I think that I, I'm starting to remember now, um, I wanted to put the camera, the GoPro in the corner instead of the phone. I think that's what I wanted to do. The 360 camera mount is perfect. I think that looks awesome. And then the GoPro on the windshield is okay. I think that's better, better, I guess. I don't know. I'd rather have the GoPro up in the top corner where the phone was. So anyway, I'm really curious. I got the winter dra jacket out. It's pretty cold outside and I got the winter hat on. So it, it was in the garage. This has been in the garage. The garage is warmer than the outside. I would say it's like 50. No, I'd probably say it's like 60, 65 degrees in the shop here. Um, it's not a heated garage by no means, um, but it's got insulation and everything and shares with the house. So I'm curious what we're going to feel. So this is kind of testing ground. So I'm gonna put you in the corner again, and then uh, we're gonna go outside and see if it gets really cold inside the cab or not. And I, this will gauge whether how prepared I have to be, whether I need the jacket and boots, or I need the whole get up with the jacket, the overalls, the boots, gloves, the the better hat. Um, I just wanna see with all the doors, with all of it as is, I wanna see how insulated I stay. If my body heat keeps the cab warm enough to where I don't need to dress up as warm or it gets super cold in there and I need to dress up. So that's what I wanna test right now. So yeah, anyway, let's put you up in the top corner. Let's get in this cab and see how prepared I need to get with the uh, clothing and stuff and see how warm it, it is. So yeah, you probably won't hear me. I don't have the mics, but yeah, let's get you in this. Let's see, let's test this out. All right, so we got you guys in there. <laughs> So I can tell you it is, let's see, actually. What is the temperature outside? It's 36 degrees outside. All right, so it's not as cold as it was. It was probably in the 20s yesterday. Um, so the nice thing is I have the garage door opener in here. So that's really nice. That would be nice. Let's see how well it fires up. Really nice.
so far it's, it's still warm in here.
as you can tell, you can't see anything. And to be honest with you, I can't see anything either. <laughs> so, now, what, now look at this. Look at that. Now you can see everything. That is wild. Like, look how far you can see. Like, that's insanely bright. Wild. The lights on here are really awesome. So I've yet to change the handle situation for this. So I can't quite go down without smashing into the, the panel there. But yeah, well, that answered a lot of my questions. So yeah, like I was saying, that answered a lot of my questions. And uh, yeah, more and more practice I get tucking it in. Um, I'm you know, not used to that yet. So um, you know, it's gonna take some time to get that backing in process perfect. But if you couldn't hear me, uh, what I was saying out there is like initially it was warm and then it stayed warm for the majority. Um, the reason why I went on the road there and got into third gear, I really wanted to test the air penetration of the cold air coming into the cab and you could definitely feel the cold air. So I, I would say you have a good 10, 15 minutes of uh, if this shop was 80 degrees in here, which if anyone heats their house to 80 degrees, you're a gremlin, you're insane. But if you heat your house to the average 68 to 72 degrees, I think uh, being at the higher end, because I think in here, it's, like I said, it's like anywhere from 50 to 60 degrees in here. So if it were to be that eight degrees cool, uh, warmer, excuse me, if it was eight degrees warmer um, and it was 68 degrees in here, then I would say that, um, yeah, it, you'd probably get an extended amount of time. So having all the doors and the canvases on correctly really would help in the situation and uh yeah it was nice so i probably will do the uh just normal pants with some boots and then do my jacket and hat set up and uh, i'll probably get some like thinner gloves i probably don't need the thick gloves um, but probably most of the time what's going to happen i can see it now is that i'll probably plow for a little bit which i'll be in uh full gear i'll be with thick gloves, thick hat, the overalls, overalls, snow pants, uh, overalls and the jacket here. And uh, then I'll probably end up just jumping into the cab. So um, I don't think uh, this really necessarily counts until we have those days where it's strictly just um, cab. And that's where I'll dress appropriately, appropriately for that. So anyway, that answered that question. Next clip will be trying the GoPro where this phone was.
So as you saw in that clip, I got these uh, all adjusted properly. And uh, I went with the all the way down approach. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to adjust these, but yeah, got them all the way down. And when I mean dip by down, I mean like the brackets are bottomed about to the, to the top of it, I guess. But yeah, look at that clearance. So I'm not sure how you're supposed to do it. My driveway has a lot of uh, dips in it, some waves to it. And I feel like, uh, yeah, um, as you saw in that clip, I feel like it got pretty close to that edge and you really don't want to wear that edge out because yeah, that's, then you have to replace the whole thing. So I'd rather wear the shoes out. Um, I actually might want to take the shoes off and see if I can make a duplicate, a copy of them before they completely wear out. And then, uh, yeah, I'll have, you know, copies and blanks and stuff for uh, future ones. I'm not sure how long this setup I'll have, but at least, you know, the shoes, you know, is a wear item. So at least I'll have them in stock and stuff. So I'm not totally sure on that, um, but I am getting better at parking it in here. Also, I wanted to I want to show you what Corbin and I made. I'm gonna give all the credit to Corbin. Um, let's see if I can. I, I really do need to get a dome light in here, huh? Um, let's see. Look at that right there. Can I get this out right here? No. So I might pick this up. Hold up. And look at that right here. We made a pretty cool little handle here out of some just regular old plumbing pipe. So this is an 18 inch stick of three quarter inch um, pipe, I guess. I don't know if it, what the wall thickness is. Um, 306, 34 by 18, three quarter inch by 18 black steel pipe. Um, and then we just got a four inch extender to a coupler and a cap, all three quarter, of course. Uh, and I'm gonna leave it just like this. Yeah, right there, three quarter. Three quarter, three quarter cap. Uh, we did the four inch as a uh, little handle here, something to grab onto. Um, and it just kind of looks cool. Um, but the 18 inch was not enough. And then the next size up was too much. So we were like, cause we had the stock handle with us. And uh, yeah, the next piece up was like too long. And then the, this size was too short. So we were like, uh, we, so we tried like a five inch and a three inch. And then we found the four inch with the coupler and the cap was just perfect. So when you slap it on here, it is great. So stick that on right there there's a little shorty handle and then when it comes down it is well far enough away from hitting anything and goes right to the end there so yeah before the handle was way up here <laughs> i don't know it was really tall so it smacked in and yeah we probably could have gone with a five inch but i wanted to be very crystal clear so the stock handle that was in here is on Larry. So anyway, that's that. Nothing else is new in, in the cab or anything. So that is that. And yeah, we're getting pretty close to wrapping up, preparing for winter. Um, new stuff comes up all the time. So nothing new with Rhino 2. Yep, nope. Just checking it over. Um, I'm going to leave the lights as is. Not gonna change them to LED. I need to still do that to this one actually. And I got them right here. So these are the LEDs that go in it. And uh, I actually picked up something. Yeah, right here. So this is like at banding <clears throat> for like palletizing stuff for pallets when you ship it off to somewhere. This is like banding that holds stuff. So this was thin enough and malleable. Like you could bend this with your hand. Um, so, um, I'm going to use that to hold the lights on. I'll make a whole video on that all on itself. Um, and you actually probably could use that as tank straps too. So, oh, someone's vid visiting me. Hello, honey. I don't like them in here too often because the oils 
um, cause I don't, I'm not good with keeping the oil off the ground. So you don't want the oils to get on the dog's paws cause he will lick it. So just make sure you're aware of that. So be careful, honey. You're a little skittish. Yeah. There's a little puddle over there. I don't want him touching. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This was, uh, obviously filmed a long time ago for you guys because currently I am uploading my last video for the year so unfortunately all this can't go out before then but I might sprinkle some of these if it if it goes without snowing over a month I'll probably post something I want to stay active at least every month so yeah 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 you know you're not supposed to be out here go back inside hon go 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 inside. There you go. Keep going. <laughs> there he goes. So this is my recent purchase. There's a B43G there out of a GT. And then there's a pretty complete Onan 16 horsepower that I'm going to put in stock. He says it came out of a generator. And that's why I think the carb looks a little different. But that one has a carb. So that's nice. That carbon intake rail made it worth it and then if this engine runs the trip was made worth so i pretty much what i paid for everything here i mean i got tins for a b43g air intake um he said this one blew up but this alone is what i paid pretty much what you would pay for that if it's complete runs and drives so um to have that carburetor i mean for what i paid people are paying for that carburetor alone um but with the air intake rail there um, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. If I, if I were to part this out, sell the engine and that carburetor and rail over there, um, I could look good. But that, that right there is junk. This block is junk. It blew up, destroyed everything. So the only good thing out of that and what I'm going to keep out of this is the air intake rail carburetor. The oil pan is good and the air intake box. The rest is going to get scrapped. I'll keep all the tins. Um, so... And then the exhaust, I'm not going to keep that. Might keep, actually, I might keep it around or just keep the pipes around, actually. And then this I'll keep around. This will be a spare laying around. And you can tell it's out of a generator or something because it doesn't have pulleys. But it looks like it came out of Suburban at one point because it's yellow th showing through. So definitely could have been. Got a Good heads I'll keep too with the oil pan, heads, the, the stator, the, that I'll keep, and then the rest will just be tossed because, yeah, it blew up. That crank is horrible. Pistons might keep pistons and rods, depending, maybe just the piston heads. Um, the, the connecting rods might be junk from blowing up. Um, I, I might not keep any of that actually because it did let go, so bad scoring on the crank there so yeah not good not too good blue blew up but good carb this whole deal i mean just the carburetor and air intake rail i feel like even if you're buying that i mean the stator alone is 90 dollars. people are trying to get stupid and then same with the carburetor intake rail i mean people are asking 200 dollars for that so if you want to know i paid 100 dollars for all this <laughs> so definitely worth it i think because people are selling complete ones of these for at least a hundred and a half so maybe 200 i forget what people are paying for these but uh, a good deal good deal um i like my parts you know that <clears throat> so good parts you know that i like hoarding parts and stuff so it was a pretty good deal i didn't even mean to hit them up the uh, Facebook Marketplace save and, you know, it generates a random message for you. Those two buttons, the send button and the save button are right next to each other. <laughs> so I meant to save this for later. <clears throat> I meant to save this for later and it ended up, I ended up hitting the, the send button instead. So <laughs> I was like, hey, well, whatever, my fault. So I'll take the two hour drive over. So if you calculate this, I'm, I guess I'm a hundred and... $40 into this so for fuel time and the money I paid for this so not bad though not bad people pay 150 for that and some people are paying $80 to $100 for that so and then 
eighty dollars. So I probably have like three or four hundred dollars in value if I were to wait the time, put it on eBay correctly. But I like to keep all this in stock. The loader actually is going to need this carburetor, so that carburetor seems like it will be good. Get a rebuild kit. I actually have a, two rebuild kits in stock right now. Bought the last two on eBay. Let me go show you that. All right, currently can't get to them, but they're right there. Two rebuild kits right there for the own in carburetors. Um, I was gonna do it to the loader, but I don't know now. So yeah, I'm gonna just put a whole new air intake rail on the loader if I can. So anyway, I'll stop uh, chatting your ear off, kind of give you what was going on though, give you the, the gist of what I've been going through and stuff. Um, I was gonna rebuild this one too. That's why I got two. I was gonna rebuild this one, but these have been, I don't know, it's been reliable, hasn't needed it. So I was gonna get batteries for these, but I guess sitting in the nice warmish garage here that it hasn't need to, um, hasn't needed a battery. Um, that one came with a good battery, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna look into getting some nice batteries for it though. Um, might get an AGM battery for that. Um, we'll see though, just so it's not ever a problem. So uh, as far as I know, this is gonna stay in warm storage during the winter and then um, it'll stay out in the shed there for the summer storage. So it'll stay relatively warm and I'll make sure to uh, start it up every so often. So, but yeah, it's gonna get restored eventually. So I have a cool setup that I'm gonna do, but it requires me redoing all that. So that will come shortly. So yeah, anyway, just wanted to make a wrap up right there for you. Um, and I will continue this um, for the LED lights and uh, the other stuff that I was going to do um, to this. I feel like it, this needed something, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll do LED lights on there, front tires on there, and then I'll show you what I'll do. I'll kind of show you at Home Depot what I'm going to plan on grabbing there. Um, for the weights, so, because I want to be able to triple stack those, so, um, yeah, I want to have that possibility, um, I'm gonna hope it's not, um, a mistake sticking them out so far, like, these are pretty stuck out, um, uh, pretty far, so, I don't know if I'm gonna want it any more than that, but I would like to have the possibility of being able to do three, so, and that's my next thing to do, um, yeah, you'll probably see that before this. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll kind of spoil it. I do plan on buying one more tractor. Um, so I haven't gotten it before. So that's all I'll say. So I, I don't have one. I've never bought one. I've never had one. So I do plan on having another one. So, and uh, yeah, I don't know if this will stay like this. That's all I'm going to say. I'm out. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but... Anyway, I'll catch you when I plan on doing that. Okie dokie, I'm out here in my shorts. That's how nice it is. Uh, but I wanna get to tackling the LED lights on this. So I'll kind of show you. Oh yeah, and I got no hat on too, so. <laughs> so I kind of wanna get into this. So this will be over, it's kind of late in the day now, but. Oops, if I don't knock that down, so you guys can see. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to show you the idea that I have. So I think this should be easy. Um, I want to do the wiring pretty legit though. So these are off of Joey, the SS15. Um, so they have a little bit of remnants of what it was on there. Um, so Corbin did these last and he had it pretty legit. So I'll make sure to get legit stuff. Um, so yeah, so I can replicate what he did. So no more zip ties, okay? We're gonna be pretty legit here. We're gonna play this legit. So with my handy dandy shorty here, which is really cool that I, I found that. 
we're gonna take these off and I'm gonna reuse reuse this in a way so, so let's take these out really oh, no no rubber there looks like it's falling apart no big deal so then these come out and then oh this one's not using that huh oh it's got a tap oh very nice okay so i'll make sure that i I replicate that then very nice very nice so I'll make sure to replicate that on this one I'll get make sure my head wasn't in the way there <laughs> but I'll replicate that don't throw those away though definitely keep those for later so these are the positives and then the ground shared ground so what will happen is these will just go right back, right back into there. Yeah, just like that. Let me look down, let me see. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. It'll be like that, so there's gonna be a lot of extra wiring. I wanna make sure I keep that, because apparently <laughs> I jump from tractor to tractor with these. Um, mounting them to these and then uh, the wiring can be tomorrow so. yes. Yes. Very nice. yes keep some thin snips and I'll take this banding so tape it all up this stuff is dangerous and when I mean this stuff is dangerous, meaning it's just it's spring steel, I believe. So it's very springy and uh, sharp. So just be careful. I recommend wearing gloves. Don't do as I do, do as I say, as they, as they would say. <laughs> here is that's gonna have to be so I am doing a voiceover here so I don't think I explained it well enough but I am using this banding to uh, mount the light to the grill here instead of using zip ties um, so I went straight for bending drilling holes um, and I, that was the wrong approach so um, yeah, I cut a little strip off of that huge roll to the, about the dimension I thought I would need. And then I brought it over, drilled a hole through it. And you got to be really careful. This stuff's thin and it wrapped around the drill bit there. So you got to be really careful with this stuff if you're going to do what I do. Um, so yeah, I made it shorter, drilled a hole there. And then I was putting bends in it around the light. And that was not the right approach here, like I said. Um, it, you just couldn't get it right and when I did get it right it was too loose and the light could flop around so what I learned really quickly was um, I matched the length because the length was pretty good there cut a new piece and did no bends I went away with the bends and I learned that really quickly here you'll start to see that and uh, yeah it, it just wasn't as secure as I wanted it to be so I did zero bends in it um, so I just matched the piece up that I did here. I had enough to make at least like 10 of these. <laughs> um, I kind of got too much banding there. Uh, so I just went back and did the, you know, no bends, just did a flat straight piece. And that ended up working so much better. And just drilling two holes approximately where I needed it. And I drilled the hole on the other side a little short so that it could stretch the banding across and uh, you know really secure that light and that's where I did right here no bendings at all um, so I kind of just left it straight forced it over the light and then it made its own bends and that's when it worked out great
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's cool, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, could come down a little bit more, a little, a little bit more finessing, but that looks cool. So I'm just gonna rinse and repeat on the other side. All right, so I just seem to have more and more to film in this video as I thought I would be ending the uh, preparing for winter. I just purchased, um, markers for the driveway that you stick into the ground. So I'll show you that at my um, customer's property that I have that I'm doing this winter and then my neighbor's property and then my property. So I have three driveways to do and to look after this year. So yes, I just purchased those. So that, you know, fits very well into the theme that we're doing. Um, so I need to finish this, but I will catch you up real quick on what I did. And this is a good starting point for you to uh, join in here. So I got a bunch of these connectors on there. Let me go get the last one I need in my car. All right, so I did a little bit behind your back, I'm sorry, but I went out and got some connectors. So I went with these round style that plug in and uh, so, what you do is you put these in, crimp them here, and then heat shrink them around there. So I did that to all of them except for the power wire here. So I put them on the connectors, zip tied the leads up because I don't want to necessarily cut these just in case it doesn't make it. Um, meaning, like it doesn't make it, meaning uh, if it doesn't stay on here all the time. It's just everything that I've been putting on these tractors, I've just been doing it in a way where I'm saying it's temporary because for some reason, it always ends up just being temporary. Um, so I need to be vigilant of this. So ground is like that. So positive needs this one. So um, I think this one, I think I made too thick. Now the next one. Everything looks good there. Tug test looks good. And shrink that one. And these are really nice connectors that allow you to do that. So yeah, I made these uh, opposite of one each other so that they can't be mistakenly plugged in. So like positive and negative won't work. <laughs> so negative, negative work and positive and positive work. So. Yeah, you can't mistake in that. You can't mess that up. There's a reason why, you know, I did it that way. And that was so it can't be messed up. So, just thinking about the next guy, you, you know, if there is a next guy. So that's how that's wired up. I can do a close up later or in a different video if that's what you want. So the next step now is to see how it looks because I'm curious and to see if it works too honestly oh yeah 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Look at that, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Not wild. That's crazy. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would say, uh, there we go. I would say that works. <laughs> so, not a huge need for uh, not a huge need for these lights. <laughs> Actually, wow. Yeah, those are brighter. Uh, the headlights are brighter than the than these, and th these are pretty bright too. So, cool. Um, again, I'm gonna do another test here. So I'm gonna get the GoPro set up and uh, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll show you the process of taking Rhino 2 out of here. All right, so I got you in the top corner there. We'll see how well that works. Um, got the shorty handle here, which is, oh yeah, that's pretty nice. So let's get, let's get the SS18 started to open the garage door, which is awesome that I can do that. So I turned the floodlight off out there so we can get a true test of these lights. Yeah, with these LED lights, these ones, I mean, these are good flood. Yeah, no, it's still good.
so yeah, I think that looks really good. You're gonna have to tell me what you think. Um, I haven't seen the, the footage yet of the GoPro. Uh, but yeah, these LEDs look amazing and are very bright as always, you know. Um, but yeah, they kind of take away from the, the lights up there, but you know, they, they still work though as floodlights and they're nice. So um, definitely not, not against it, you know, it's nice. So I don't have to use those um, all the time. I can just use the front ones. So no, it's nice, it's nice. I can't wait to start snow blowing with this. I'm gonna adjust the feet a little bit. I think they're a little too high. I think if you were down, comment down below, like, oh no, you put those too high. I agree. Um, I think I'm gonna lower them down a little bit, lower the, the snow blower a little closer, maybe do, um, I think there's like two finger gaps. <laughs> so maybe I'll do like a finger gap or something. Uh, um, yeah, I'll just keep it slightly above, but uh, yeah, cause I don't want those like hurting other people's driveways. Cause I got like two, two more to do other than mine. So anyway, I'll figure that out anyways. Um, but the next clip will be um, putting the snow stakes and stuff. The snow stake. What do you want to call them? Driveway markers? That's a better word. So uh, yeah, they're actually the same brand from my bucket pallet fork. So the v I think they're called Vivor. Vivor. Yeah, Vivor. Um, I ordered the same company uh, offered snow markers. Actually, really good deal, actually. Um, they do bundles. Uh, I believe you can get a pack of 30. Yeah, a pack of 30 for $30. So it's a dollar each. Um, and it comes with a gloves and a drill bit to put them in. I'm like, that's no brainer. Um, you can get a 50 pack for $40, 80 cents. Yeah, 80 cents a piece. Um, and then a pack of 100 for, I think it was 50, $60. So uh, really good deal there if you need markers. Um, so I got the pack of 50. <laughs> I don't think I need that much, um, but I'm gonna do my driveway because I wanna mainly snow blow this year. And then I'm gonna do the neighbors and my, my client up the street there. So I need to do theirs soon. So that comes in Monday. So I'll catch back with you Monday doing that. And then I'll do my neighbors and stuff when they get back to me and then I'll do my driveway. So. Yeah, we're gonna be legit this year, but yeah, no, having the pack of 50, I think I'll never have to buy them again. And uh, you know, in, it happens, people are gonna run them over or they'll disappear or something. So I'll have, uh, you know, extras for that occasion since, uh, you know, I'm gonna be building my clientele list very soon, hopefully. I haven't gotten any calls yet, so no one's panicking quite yet. Um, but I, uh, you know, I put ads out there and stuff. So, you know, some eventually maybe someone We'll call, I'll be like, hey, can you do blah, blah, blah. Whatever, you don't need to hear it. Anyway, I'll catch up with you uh, Monday. All right. Let my dog out and we're snowing. You can hear it for sure. So here's the first of the snow. And you get that loader inside. Luckily, uh, Corbin and I have plans on cleaning that little shed out to get that in there, so. So there it is, the first of the snow. It is uh, November 9th, first of the snow, so. Are you recording? Of course. Okay. This is uh, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Okay, look at the quality of this. All individually branded, they got the thingies, so you can hit them with a the hammer. And look, they even got a little pointy jacket thing on. These will last a long time. As long as you don't hit them. Yeah. All right, so we're here. I'm not sure where to, the best placement is. Do you need to do wide angle? I'll just swap to it. What do you think of? Hey. Hi, Doc. Not everybody wants to be recorded. Oh, yeah, them. Yeah. So you to be somewhat courteous to people. That's true. As you can tell, Corbin's more professional than I am. About the one right here. No, I know you. You're gonna hit it right there. No, I'll take that as a line. Okay. Not to hit it. Yeah, I'm sure. I know who you are. I know what you do. 
I know you. You get a little carried away with your own, own stuff and then you... Yeah. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> uh, we should probably do it here. Make, yeah, makes sense there because that's the curb. Professional here. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you gotta remember, you gotta come back and collect all these. I know. Yeah, I have to make sure I track how many I put in. I'm only gonna come to like here probably, right? Oh. Well, it makes sense. Run it to their door. Yeah. So they can get in and out. Maybe I gotta clean a path to their uh, their oil. I don't know. <laughs> it selected the, the lower package. Uh, I don't even need one here. No, I, there's a wall there. I would like that to be on the outside, you know. Sure. Yeah, you don't have a way to put that. Yeah. You're just gonna have to remember. You have to use your noggin. I know. I know. Just remember that, and then add like six inches. No. I don't know. I feel like that should be in here. Actually, it should probably be in the middle. I think you're overthinking this. Let us know in the comments if he's overthinking this. Yeah, but I'd rather overthink it and be safe. Cause this is, I break something I have to pay for it, you know? You gotta, you gotta hit it. Remember, you also want those up high enough because the city's gonna throw snow on those. Yeah, that's true. That's just true. Yeah, it, so I should suck it in the way in case they come up close, you know? All right, how many do I use? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight. eight in total. So, you yeah. remember that. Yeah, and I'll never see him again. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to leave him here and forget about him. Yeah. Sounds like a... Look at that. I'm glad I bought 50 because I only have 5 plus 4. 9 left. Quick snaps. So I would have gone through that. Not 9. So yeah, I would have used exactly 30. No, 40. We don't math here, so... Anyway, there we go. Yeah. How's that look? Huh? Yeah. A little close, buddy? All right, so I got the plowing markers up at the driveway in my driveway and the neighbors. And uh, yeah, we'll see how long those last. Um, I don't really need them around my house, but uh, they, you know, they, they're kind of nice. Kind of mark out the driveway. And there's one thing I remembered I was saying in a few clips that I, I had something on Rhino 2 that I needed. Now I remember what I need to do. So there's the plowing markers. I did one right at that edge. That edge, I always catch the plow on that edge. So it would be nice to have that. Got one there, there, one in the middle there, and one on the corner of the driveway. So what did I wanted to do on this? So let me get the light. So this has the, this engager that gets in the way of moving the plow. So I want to eliminate that. That's two bolts on the, I can't, uh, yeah, two bolts on here. And uh, yeah, we can get that gone because that just, it's right in the way. It, it's right in the way. Right when you go to hit this, when the plow's up, uh, this gets right in the way. So I want to take this off. Um, you know, I, I don't really need this for now. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I need to do. Brand new fluid in the transaxle. And then we need to do some, engine oil we'll have to replace the oil and that before the heavy plowing season but yeah i need to get that off real quick because yeah that's a nuisance i've kind of gotten around it you kind of hug your foot right up against it 
um, so it's really annoying. Um, if it wasn't there, it would be perfect. So let me get to doing that real quick. Okay, just like that, took it off and uh, much better now, much better. So when the plow's up, which is gonna make a loud noise, it's squeaky. <laughs> Yeah, you can get to that much better now. Very nice. Something I've been meaning to do for a long time. So when I have, oh yeah, that's already way better. So you can push that in and move it. Wow. Yeah, that's gonna need some grease <laughs> or some oil. Wow, that is loud, but that is much better now. I like that way, way better. Awesome. So I've been meaning to do that for a minute. So with that being said, we are slowly running out of things to do before the first snowfall. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to end it right when the first snowfall happens so we can continue this series as plowing shorts. So yeah, there's very little, very little to do. That rig's looking beautiful. And uh, yeah. Um, oh, also I wanted to say that Got, I got Larry going, uh, got Larry all welded up and ready to go. We wired in the windshield wiper, which actually works on that thing and it's motorized, which is really cool because that one's hand, you know, powered. So yeah, anyway, um, very slow things left to do. Um, I definitely will make the video with bringing Larry to Corbin's house and uh, yeah, anything else that ends up popping up before the first snow. All right. So, I don't know, I don't know. Preparing for winter still, still has yet to snow. We're close, we're close, we're getting there. Um, it has, you know, a few sprinkles, a few snow showers. Um, but I need to move the 18 up. And I wanna do what I did to Rhino. Let's see if I can just move this though. No problemo. Thinking about getting new front tires. Ooh, coming close there. Let's steer a little out. All right. So this is what I mainly want to work on. You see that? Yeah. There we go. I want to work on this. So as you see, and I need to grind these off too. But as you see, that's not really working there. Actually, hold up. So it's pretty frown, but frowned upon to just cut these so I'll just zip time all right no flappy doos all right so what I want to fix here is this problem right here So, yeah, let me get these off first. Oh my God, these were, that was three threads away from falling off. That's funny. Wow, those were on there. <laughs> All right, so I did this on Rhino, but 
This is how to put weights on the proper way. So I really don't know how much I'm gonna need. Um, so these are eight inch long carriage bolts that are half inch dash 13. Um, you'll need two if you wanna do it proper, you can do four, you really just need two. Um, these are expensive nowadays, so uh, do the bare minimum. Um, so how I do it is, this is how I'm, I, this is a setup that I'm doing for double weights. So um, these are 12 inch uh, weights, cast iron, 33 pounds a piece, factory sears. Um, this is all galvanized stuff. Um, so I went with eight inches. Um, I went with six. You can get away with six inches. Um, I'm hoping I went with the right amount so that it's possible for me to do triples. Um, so I would say if you're trying to do a, if you're trying to do a double weight system here and it be flush, do six inch. If you want to do, um, you want, you want to stay on the cautious side to make sure it will fit. I did six and a half and it sticks out a little bit. So we are about to find out if this will work or not. Um, for triples, this might only be good enough for uh, doubles. So we will find out when you're putting this when you're putting this on, make sure you do the ones with the big pockets. Um, you can do these ones on the inside, but um, if you want them to line up, like I like mine to line up, but if you want them staggered, then definitely do the inner one with the non hole ones, the uh, just these flush ones. Um, but if you want them to line up, do the, the deep ones. So I learned that, <laughs> learned that the hard way. usually holds itself but so I like to do a lock washer and then a nut um, and the reason for the lock washer is because you're gonna get a lot of vibration and a lot of spinning mass so that will just re-ensure that the nut locks onto this weight. So I believe these are just out of the range for my deep socket. Yeah. So we'll have to hit it with this. No big deal. And the reason why I do it this way um, is because each weight will get locked in. Uh, I don't want one bolt to be responsible for 66 pounds. Um, so this way each, did I say bolt? I meant nut. Each nut is responsible for 66 pounds, only two nuts holding that on. So what I like to do is to double nut. So when you put this one on, you're going to have to make sure that that goes on here because you need that room for that nut. They did that on purpose so that you could double weight them. I believe they did that for the loaders. I believe in the loader manual, it tells you you can double weight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If I had another weight, I could show you. I would recommend six inch if you wanna do double. If you plan on doing triples, like I might do, I would have to recommend six inch. 
six and a half if you want to be cautious. You want to be make, you want to make sure you have enough. All right, a moment of truth. Can we do triple? Oh, close, but no cigar. Dang. All right, so you'd have to do eight and a half. Damn, that really sucks. Cause that one's almost there. All right, so you can't do triples, but that looks cool. <laughs> You kind of could if you had like this system. You almost could get away with, could get away with it. That could really hold it in there and do triples. Cause I can't see that going anywhere, but, oh, dang. I mean though, it, I mean it technically could. I mean, you see it, it definitely could do triples. I bet you I could. Man, eight and a half would probably be perfect. Yeah, you couldn't do that, but. Yeah, you could do a nut there. Can't do a nut on that one. I think if I tighten that down more though. I got a nut on that though. That's about halfway on. So yeah, you could technically do triples. I would do, I would do eight and a half. So that's cool. I definitely plan on doing triples. I just need to buy more weights. So that's cool. That's why I did that though. I wanted to make sure. You're pretty much stretching that, the abilities of that, though. But I bet you if I tighten that down a little bit more. Tighten that side down a little bit. Get a nut on that. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go. So you can you can do triples. Woo! All right, I definitely want to do triples this year. Wow, what does that make that? Wow, 99. That's 99 pounds. Wow. That's 98 pounds a side. So that's like 200 pounds. Uh, imagine if you do quadruples, that would be cool. Seeing three stacked on there is pretty, pretty surreal. Can you see that from this angle? Triple stacked is crazy. Wow. That's cool. I'm not sure how much weight I'm going to need anyway, so we'll see. Well, it's possible. That's awesome. But yep, that's why I wanted them that long. And they're, they're not going anywhere either. So they're both on there. So that was the plan for that.
So there's the double stack. And uh, yeah, plans to do uh, triples. Oh, I just want the, uh, you know, I wanted the ability to do triples. That was the point of that. And I think that will work out. So I will quickly do the other side. But you don't need to see that. So it's just the same process. And uh, yeah, I'll make sure to wire tie all the, uh, the floppy bits. All right, so got that all wrapped up. And uh, now I think I can say that this thing is finally getting to the point where it's not going to get any more work done to it. I do gotta raise the feet up so it lowers the hay bin down to the ground more. Um, yeah, I think I have it too high. Got the wheel weights done. Ended up moving these lights. Since the LEDs are so bright and that's pretty much all you need, I kind of moved them to the side so they're more like alley lights now, which I, I, I bought a whole nother set for that reason. But you know what? <laughs> you know, that's, that's that now. So since those are so bright, those are now alleys, so uh, it works great. Lights up right next to you. Make sure that everything is visible um, around you. So these are very bright, so you get a pretty focused beam out here, and then those do allow some light penetration out to the sides, which is really nice. So I did some test runs back and forth in the driveway to see how the lights would work. So I think the lights point right where you want it, right when you're going down the driveway. I think with these, with those pointed left and right now, uh, you get a good point of view, pretty much, um, I would say, a little past the windshield. You can see with LED all the way out, probably or almost 180 degree. Um, yeah, it's really nice. So, yeah, that is uh, so far. Um, again, I'm kind of pushing this video out until the first snowstorm and uh, has yet to come. And we are prepared. So, I don't think there's anything else to do. Um, so, I mean, the next clip might just be when I wrap up this video when it's snowing out i really do think so there's not much more to do to rhino 2 here i think everything's done and dusted on that i think i did everything and then same with jerry over here there's really not much to do to that anymore um but yeah i think we're good i think we're good believe it or not so just got that all organized too that should look a little different cleaned it out consolidated all my mower brackets i just got a whole another three of them to add to the six I have now, I think. Uh, I think I have five normals and one for like this era, which is good thing because I don't think I have one for this. So I don't think I have any brackets on this one. I don't think this came with any. So which means just the rear and then the one that I took off for the engager. So because of the front ones mount to the bar there. So which is good. I have a whole set there for it. So which I think is that bar right there because I don't see any couplings for it. So anyway, yeah, that's that. And uh, yeah, I will catch you with the next thing that maybe pops up into my head.
So the project at hand is to put the more desirable pedal on there. It's got the 90 degree one, which is okay for engaging, but when you want to disengage, it's incredibly hard, which you're not necessarily doing every time with the Haben. Kind of can just leave it on. So here's the more desirable pedal. Let's put that on. All right, so preparing for winter, I, uh, we have Larry in the shop. We've been working for probably a few hours, right? Yeah, I got here about 5, maybe 5.10. It's about 7, almost 8. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a few. <laughs> um, so first thing we tackled, I wanted to tackle white lights. So that's all good. And then we noticed the switch was bad, so replace the switch. Uh, uh, yeah, you... here, if you want to see what the switch is. Yeah, exactly. That's the, um, with gloves, I'm not going to be able to do this. Right. This switch, same as this one. Yeah. It just... Oh, and he was working on that. Got that going. Yeah. And then, yep, got the light switch. You want to hit that? So new light switch with the LEDs. You already know how bright those are from the 18 there on Jerry. Oh, by the way, if anyone wants to know if we can get flashed for having those on. <laughs> yeah. Like, he had those on Joey, the 15. Yeah. And got flashed. You got flashed at like three in the morning. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much. And then the big thing we wanted to tackle was the spring. The spring printer. Yeah. So, so when you let it go, it now, now it doesn't just sit here. It actually yeah. comes back. So that's nice. That's called safety. That's safety nice to have. Yeah. Yeah. Not because when you're barreling at 100 miles an hour, you want to put the clutch in. You don't want it to just stick. No. Everybody knows me. It's just let it go and let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fun times so, Corbin, you know? Yep. So the last thing we have to do is mount the uh, the front of the cab to the floor. Because it oh, careful, we might break some wheels. <laughs> They're strong. Done by a professional. Exactly. So, yeah. That was the big thing was a spring. The less important thing was the lights and then the wiper, but nice to have. And then, uh, yeah, bolting it to the bottom here should be fine. So... Yeah, the last few things left for preparing for winter, still yet without snow. Very close. We've had dustings. Yeah. If you go up north, it's actually There's a couple like inches, yeah. Inches. Well, in the mountains, definitely. People are already skiing up there, so. Yeah. 
But yeah, we're close. We're close. We're close. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Why won't this go in there? Yeah, so very disappointed. Um, the twelfth is rapidly approaching. If you remember from my old plowing shorts, the first snowstorm that I plowed was December twelfth. So I was really hoping to get snow before then. Um, we'll see if it's anywhere close. Technically, it, the first snow was November 9th, the first dusting. I believe I have a clip in this very video of that. And then we got another dusting um, a couple weeks ago. And then we got a dusting recently, like a day ago. So we're getting dustings a lot sooner, but we're not getting any snow that sticks. So, and this weekend's going to be 50 plus degrees. Yeah, it's supposed to snow. No, it's supposed to rain. Yeah. Like all weekend, so all the snow that we just got. Is well, we don't have anything, yeah. but up north, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, if north, you want a little, you are. yeah, if you want a little bit of context, this is what it looks like outside. No snow. So, cold, but no snow. Yeah, nothing. But it's an El Nino year, so we have to expect warm, cold, warm, cold. So. It is what it is. But anyway, we'll get to the last of it and uh, the next clip will be delivering this thing to Corbin's house. So good luck with Larry. All right, so a couple days later and uh, yeah, we're kind of getting close here. Uh, we're gonna have a rainstorm actually, which is so frustrating, but yeah, just triple stacked the SS18 here. So I, uh, yeah, long story short is I went to pick up one set of wheel weights for this and uh you know i wanted to get a triple stack um and i i ended up with five sets of wheel weight so there's four sets right here and uh just put one on here so yeah so long story short uh i was supposed to meet a guy down in mass on my way to new york i was just gonna do a little weekend trip and uh plans ended up falling through and uh that never happened so I uh, told the guy I was gonna go down, for, I was gonna drive to New York Friday night, and uh, uh, yeah, that never happened. So I said, hey, I can't make it, but can I do Saturday morning? I wanna stick with my deal. You know, I told you I was gonna get it. I'm gonna, you know, keep my end of the deal. So I was like, I'm not gonna back out on you. I told you I was gonna go get these. So yeah, I ended up going down Saturday morning, grabbed the one set, and as I was driving home, I uh, stopped at a rest stop, made a deal with a guy in PA. And he ended up shipping out these ones that I put on here. Um, so he ended up shipping out one set. I picked up one set and it was like, perfect, two sets. One for the triple stack for the loader and a triple stack for the SS18 here. So it was like, perfect. Um, and then uh, as I get home, a couple hours later from doing a trip out in Mass, the same guy that I picked up in Mass, um, he's like, hey, if you need any more wheel weights, just let me know. And I was like, Shoot, man, you should have told me that. I would have bought more right there. So I was like, how many more do you have? He's like, I got three more sets that I know of. I was like, perfect, I'll come back. So I ended up driving again Sunday morning and uh, got three more sets. So yeah, I got four total sets from him and then I got one shipped in. So I have five wheel weight sets. So that's perfect. I got four sets right here and that will go on this guy right here that you guys don't know about yet, but you will soon. So I can do a double stack on that and that'll leave me with two more for a potential other build that I want to do. So yeah, uh, that's perfect. I have the perfect amount. Um, I, I've stopped right there. I have five sets. I don't need any more. Um, you know, I could future proof, but you know, I'll let other people get wheel weights because these things are hard enough to find. So I was lucky to get the ones that I have. So yeah, that's your quick update to preparing for winter. Um, I think the last clip you saw was with Corbin. Um, we got the we got Larry all buttoned up, ready to go. I think all it needs now is a new battery, and uh, that thing is perfect. Same with the 18 here; it definitely needs a new battery. I've kind of been uh, neglecting that and not doing that. So, yeah, very little things to do here. I'm just waiting for snow. That's just how it is. So, once the first snowstorm comes, you will know, and that will be the end of this video. So, but anyway, for now, I'll catch you then. All right, so here she is at her new home and already causing problems for Corbin, unfortunately. The tank 
sprung a leak. So, what is going on over here? <clears throat> Just found out one day that you had gas everywhere. Yeah, my mom called and was like, "Hey, the garage was like, yeah, it's in the puddle." <laughs> Oops. So yeah, we just ripped this tank out again because I ripped it out before to get the brand new fuel line up to it. Um, and then he FaceTimed me and it was leaking a couple around this area. I'm not really seeing anything. Um, obviously I'll do my own testing and get this thing. I mean, you can tell it's been leaking. So um, Corbin's drilling and tucking up the wiring right now. Something I need to do in my cab as well. I've neglected the same. So, but yeah, here she is home in her new home for the winter and uh, already causing problems which is just great i mean it's, it's good it's a good mower so uh, but yeah we're debating on what we want to do um it's very hard to find the right springs and i only say that because i don't know what i'm looking for but there's a version where they they pretty much put it one one thing up like if you are wanting to do this at home and you have this tank style you just put it up one and just drill a new hole it does shift and clear fine um just obviously it's going to be a little difficult with a seat and it also moves your seat up a whole bolt so maybe you can drill a new hole way back here to get it to to sit there but we're not going to go with that option what we're going to do is pretty much bolt this right back up and uh put a plastic tank right here we have all this room someone put this plate here which has been very useful because holds the cab up and we just welded right to the back. So I think we're gonna figure out, extend this or put this down here to where it comes up here um, and put the plastic tank here somehow um, because the plastic tank is more desirable. This is a one and a half gallon, I believe, but if you tip, you, know, you fill it all the way to the tippy top, you can get almost two gallons out of it. Um, whereas the plastic tanks are like three and a half, three gallons, so way more fuel. So yeah, sorry for coating your tools in gas, but. It is what it is. It's part of the job, you know? It is. So, yeah, we're just getting little things done to it. Um, you know, tank was a one that wasn't supposed to happen. And then I believe Corbin's going to put on a, uh, a, light a light bar. So, do you want to get some clips of that when you do that? Yeah. Okay, that'd be sweet. So, yeah, anyway, I'll update you as he does more work. And uh, I think the last thing is he wants to do a light bar. And uh, we need to weld up those. And this thing will be golden. Uh, also, I'm going to look for new wheels. It looks like that tire is good, but this one is not good again. So I'm going to rip off front wheels off of something so we can get that looking good. These Havens do weigh a lot, so they push out air in the tires. But, I mean, that's just a bad, leaky tire anyway. So, yeah, a few things left to do on Larry, uh, but uh, those updates will be from Corbin from here on out. And uh, as you can see outside, you know, preparing for winter is going to continue until it snows and it just hasn't and it probably won't until after Christmas. All right, so it is weeks and weeks later and it seems like uh, snow is not going to come. So we are here sitting, waiting for snow that is just not going to happen. Um, so apparently snow is coming in January instead of December this year. So a little disappointed, but everyone's saying that um, you know, because we have no snow in December, that January and February, when it does come, hopefully, who knows, uh, it will be big, heavy, massive snowstorm. So I guess I can't complain. Um, last year, we got a lot of little ones. I don't think we ever got over four to eight inches of snow last year. Um, so no big deal. You know, four to eight inches of snow isn't a huge deal to this. I would like to test this thing further um you know four to eight, four to eight inches for this is nothing i mean it even says you know zero to six inches is its minimum and then uh, it can handle up to six to twelve and then it can handle you know 12 plus so it's bare minimum is six inches so this thing would barely even hesitate to throw snow in that four to eight inches like we got last year so if we can get that you know 12 plus inches of snow and really test this thing out that would be great. So I can wait for a few of a few of those storms instead of the small ones. Because the small ones, the plow rigs can really handle. So with that, I'm gonna go run this outside, get this up to operating temperature and change out the oil. So that's one thing I have neglected to do. Um, I don't think it, it really needs it, but I've never changed the oil and it looks like it could be done. So why not get some fresh oil in it and ready for the winter that may never come. 
So yeah, anyway, looking forward to some snow, but we just haven't got it. So I'm not sure what's going on with this year. I was told it's an El Nino year, meaning that we're gonna get amazing snow. And you know, it's a couple days before Christmas and we haven't seen nothing. I don't think, I think we've been, a, let's see, a snowless winter hasn't been for a while. So a snowless winter, there it is. I don't think uh, we've had a snowless Christmas without snow in a long time so who knows we'll see um so yeah i'm gonna go run this get the oil changed um there's very very little things to do <laughs> so there's not much to do i've been pretty prepared um uh, again i tried getting prepared before december that was a huge thing i think i was even trying to get you know that rig back there done before november um because there was little things saying that you know snow was gonna come earlier than last year and our first our first official snowstorm was December 12th uh, if you look back to this the plowing shorts December 12th was the very first one that I I plowed in so I was trying to get everything done before then and yeah that has come and gone times two so uh, yeah anyway uh, let's get to doing an oil change on this thing all right so got it all warmed up Honestly, I'm not sure the condition of the oil, but we'll find out. Hmm, not bad looking. Can you see that? See it draining? Yeah. So I'm just putting standard 530 in it. 5W30. Not sure how much it takes, but we will find out. Sneak by you here. See my big honking. Oh no, yes sir. Awesome. Like I said, I've been meaning to do this for a while. splashes to get the old oil out of there. Yep, yeah, that looks like it's draining the fresh stuff. Just a little, little trick if you don't mind wasting some of your some of your new oil. Uh, just throw a, uh, a couple gulps in there and that will encourage all the Usually it's such a little amount. It doesn't really matter, but get your own. Get your own. Do what you feel is right. So I'm not sure how much this takes. I don't think it takes a lot. So we'll find out. I'm sure it doesn't take much at all. Probably even tells you, to <laughs> be honest. Probably tells you. Yeah. 
honestly can't tell. <laughs> All right, yep, still needs a lot more. Right, right at the, uh, right here, right at the ad mark. Some more. Honestly, I didn't think it was gonna take. I didn't think it was gonna take a full one of these. To be honest. So close. I think one more, one more glug. <laughs> so close. Yeah, sorry for the uh, doing it over here and stuff. I'm Still getting the shop organized. We've got a lot of work going on inside here, so you probably noticed throughout the video the complete wall missing and everything. We got I got a lot going on, so kind of did a lot of work, and now I'm kind of like hanging out for a little bit. So still got a lot of work to do. Just a little over full, but I'll do it. it's like right here, right at the above the full. So that's good enough for me. When you start it up and everything, it will do its own thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Looks good. Great. All right, so that's done and dusted. I'm seeing some battery problems here that I want to take care of. I'm going to snip these. I, I did try saving these and I did save them, but I'm not really liking the uh, outcome of this or the benefit I get. Uh, it's holding the battery up and you can see it's chewing the bottom of the battery. I think that was just to keep it from sliding around. But I'm not really liking it. Sort of chewing up the bottom of the battery here. And it looks like there's still a bunch of crap on the bottom. The problem is, you can see I have electrical tape on here, it's because it still was hitting the hood. And that's not a good thing. So. Yeah, maybe that will be better. I don't think it's hitting anymore. Which is nice. Because that was not cool. So, more, <laughs> more things to throw away. I'm sure they, they were nice, but um, just it wasn't designed for that to be there. So, that will be much better. Hopefully. Hopefully, it still starts hooking. But yeah, anyway, that's Rhino all done, all maintenance, something I should have done. And, uh, you know, there's a few things that I did miss in the maintenance video, you know, that should have been in there as well. Um, I guess there's <laughs> some things that I missed, but they're done now. So. she is so yeah there was a few things that i probably should have done in maintenance saying uh rhino 2 here um you know the engine oil should have been in that video that i just did and then the transaxle fluid um i should have shown you doing that um it did have fluid in it it was low as to be expected and it did look like crap um but it's topped off with brand new fluid um I don't think I have any extra gear fluid laying around, so I can't really show you what I use. Um, but I think it's 89, uh, 8090, 8090. Yeah, no, I was looking around to see if I have any. I don't have any. Um, so yeah, I think it's 8090 um, gear fluid. Just use whatever you think is best. Um, if you want to be true to it, it says use the engine oil, 5W30. Um, so. I don't think it really matters what you put in it as long as it has some sort of lubrication. <laughs> so, I mean, I've driven, um, I've driven them with a year. I drove it for a full year um, with just water <laughs> and um, some sort of oil in it. So, honestly, you can't go wrong when you, whatever you put in it. It won't, it should last. I mean, if my, one of mine can last a year with water and some sort of fluid, I think I think just any kind of fluid would work. So anyway, that's what I have for you. I'm hoping for some snow here soon. They're not saying anything in the next month. So this video goes for another month. 
So I will see you then. All right, I wanted to add a little bit more to this video. Um, I kind of forgot to add some more stuff. So we just did that and uh, yeah, triples. I got triple weights, uh, triple stack on there. Um, I don't know if I showed that, but oh my God, can I tell a difference? I was thinking about quadruple stacking. No, 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 uh, no, that is, that is enough. That is great. Uh, it feels so, so stable. Uh, it feels so great. I can't even tuck it in anymore. It's so wide with those. So, um, you know what? I need to bite the bullet. We need to get new front tires for this thing. If you have, guys have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I really don't know what I want to do. I would love to do ag tires. Um, but I think ag tires in the front with the, without them in the rear would look funny. So I need to do new tires and paint up the wheels because they look bad so i don't know let me know your suggestions for sure um i really did like them at the time when i bought this thing but it's starting to get old now so yeah 16 by six and a half by eight so i'm gonna go onto ebay amazon and see if we can get some front tires for this thing maybe i'll just look for brand new turf savers that match you know from back to front um so yeah maybe i'll do that I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, I need to do that for sure. But yeah, triple stacks, very nice. And then I'll give you a sneak peek real quick. Whoa, yeah, a little sneak peek there. Uh, I don't know when that video will be coming out, so I wanted to show it now because I don't know when that's gonna come out. That video might be a spring project, so I'm recording it now and then gonna finish it in the spring. So, might as well show you now. Um, yeah, I got some plans with that. <laughs> Where did that come from? Did I get more than that? Who knows? Will something replace that? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, now that you saw that, look forward to that video coming out. And then I do have the 67, right? Right here? Oh, this way? Where are they? Can you even see? Can you see that there's a tractor there? Yeah, that's 67. You haven't seen that video yet. I think I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I got to get on that. I got to get that thing running. Yeah, totally forgot about that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. Um, you know, huge thanks and huge support on the uh, on the uh, bucket pallet forks. Um, I do have a 30 point hitch for the, for the uh, if you go back to when I bought the loader, I have a three point hitch. I just took it off to restore it because I was destroying. I was restoring everything on that tractor and I took that off to restore it. So yes, I know. And then some, some guy hit me up about a ballast box. Haven't heard from you in a little bit, but um, he was going to send one of those out. So that would be nice to have. Um, I would, I'll put all my, uh, all my weights in that box. If, if I hear back from him, um, if not, I'm going to build one, I think. So a lot of you suggested a, a ballast box in the back. So um, I was a little worried about putting a lot of the weight on the transaxle instead of the wheels, but, um, and I'd still have to three triple stack, three stack the uh, tri the uh, the wheel weights. So I still have yet to do that. So yeah, anyway, huge support on that. Thanks a lot for help um, on that so I can have more weight so I can pick up more. So thank you for that. And anyway, I'll catch you back whenever it snows or if I come up with something else. All right, got these Amazon special springs. Okay, Amazon they're Amazon. double packaged. Lovely. Please have two in here. Okay. Let's see. These say they work for a. Uh... Okay. Uh, said they work for like that kind of wheel. They work for a twenty. Those are twenties. These are twenty fours or twenty threes. I'm like no. No, because they wouldn't be stretched out at all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Alright, I'm buying three more of these kits. Sweet. Hello YouTube. Hello, Hello YouTube. YouTube. Oh my god, look at that. Oh. Let's let's get some of that action. <laughs> oh well, let's it's really oh also clean up this spot yeah. so you know we can actually walk around. <laughs> Look at that. 
of a relay? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Fancy. see, it needs to be aimed down a little bit. Well, okay. yeah. Let me get over there. I mean, one Allen wrench and we can adjust it. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool, man. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey, camera guy. Camera hey. guy, you getting this? Hey, yes. What do you like of that? Oh, yeah. Because this oh, also I... has, you know, the straights into the flood. Well, it's all the way down. Well, I can't really go all the way down. Well, go back to where you had it. No, 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 no. No, no. Down, yeah. Right there? Is that as far down? I mean, that's about probably as far as I can go. Yeah, that looks good. We came out here to swap tanks. So the whole goal was to go from the metal tank to the plastic tank. Um, a requirement to that is a bigger seat spring, which I had right in stock, or to just simply move the stock spring uh, one bolt forward. Um, so you have your options. And the whole goal here was to, to put the plastic tank on and we ended up not going with that. So we did get it all buttoned up and nice got the plastic tank in there and it was just not going to work for Corbin's case so what we did is we just abandoned this whole thing and we just are going to mount the plastic tank on that black bracket on the back holding the rear of the cab up um, this is kind of the premise you want to you want to do when swapping over tank so if you have the metal tank and want to swap to a plastic tank this is the process that you have to go through you have to drill a new hole for the nipple of the plastic tank um, it's just probably like a inch and a half to two inches more forward um, than the the metal one um, but we successfully got it all mounted and and right and uh, Corbin just wasn't happy with it at the end of the day. So yeah, this was all for no reason, but it is now like that and can be converted over. So um, I guess not a waste, but I just didn't want to bore you with something that we ended up not going with. So yeah, that is the, uh, the gist of what happened there. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna mount it, extend the fuel line to the more rear of the tractor and just have a floating tank on the back. Um, we were actually kind of debating on putting the metal tank back and having the plastic tank and having like five gallons of fuel. You'll just never run out. But anyway, <laughs> that it wasn't the real point of it. But uh, yeah, we'll just hang the plastic tank off the back there and just have a auxiliary tank on the backs uh, essentially. So no big deal there. Uh, it just didn't end up working out with the, it's just the bracket and the seat. It's just, there was a bunch of um, things that just stacked up on top of it, making it just not correct. Um, but no, as you see there, I mean, it's, it's there, it works. It just didn't work for our situation. So yeah, didn't want to bore you with the, uh, fine details and just do this quick little voiceover with, uh, time-lapse. <laughs>
the reason why you're seeing this video right now and why I'm recording this and why did you power wash it? Well, it turns out I gave a nice new oil change to Rhino 2 here and I started running it for a few hours and started realizing that it was draining oil like it was going out of style. So it was like a waterfall. It was not one or two drips. It was like a waterfall. So I cleaned it all up. Let's see and investigate where this leak is coming from. Why is it now all of a sudden draining oil? It was the same oil I would think that was in it, but I don't know, maybe it's a thinner oil. Maybe they were running 10 to 15 W. I put 5 W 30 in it. Let's see why and where it's leaking. just water. with how concerningly how concerned um i was i was very concerned about how much oil was coming out i thought it would make itself known right away so i'm a little surprised to see that it is bone dry let me check the oil level maybe it's out of oil because it drained it all i don't know with how fast it was losing oil i was sure it was going to make itself known right here right now but let's check the oil i guess right where I left it uh, when I did it so it was draining oil like crazy but it's right where I filled it up when I did the oil change so maybe this is not a good enough test let me go drive it around a little bit and uh, see if see if that will uh, make itself known so I'll be back Eureka all right just drove it for probably like 25 minutes Bye. This is a 
blow-by tube. I think it's coming out of here, so maybe I just overfilled it and it's just blowing by. So, very, very little. Just started to now. I thought it was going to be more obvious and honestly I thought there was going to be a, uh, a hairline crack in the block or something but you know now that I purple powered it and degreased it and everything it looks like someone has been in here repainted it made it look really nice so yeah uh, yeah I think it's just coming out of the blow by because I like I said I overfilled it just a little bit um, so, it's not doing what it was doing yesterday, though. I mean, it was just coming out like a water fountain. I am getting some, like, oil on the bottom here. If you can see where they're on the bottom, so. I'm not sure about that. But the time being, I mean, the oil level has been consistently the same for the last three days. Um... Just the last two startups, I've noticed a lot of oil everywhere. So I think I'm going to just kind of make this an anticlimactic video because I really thought it was going to be just oozing out oil everywhere. But it seems like false alarm just was a weird thing that happened. I put the compost mill on here. Maybe it just didn't like it. It was rattling it more than it should. Um, so I think we're safe to button it back up, put the plow back on it, and uh, send it. So I think it's okay. So, if I can do all that, I mean, that right there was a nice plow session. I probably ran it 20, 30 minutes here. Um, I was doing lap after lap after lap. So, um, yeah. So, and it's about 45 degrees. So, it would be the warmest winter day if, if this thing was out plowing. So, obviously, it wouldn't be plowing if it was 45 degrees. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say that we can button this thing back up and uh, continue on. So, false alarm, a little scary there. Um, it was just oozing out oil like left and right and uh you know it concerned me a little bit because it was like rhino has been so good rhino 2 has been so good to this point it was uh, a little concerning so good to know it was a false alarm maybe it was just a uh one time accidental thing where you know it had a lot of oil in it because i overfilled it and you know now that it burned it off and i leaked it out it's fine so yeah i'll stop talking and uh we'll get back to what we're doing
All right, just like that, Rhino is back together, set up for plowing whenever it decides to snow. And uh, yeah, looking good. So I got the plow back on there. Kept the mule drive cover off just because it's always gonna have an attachment. And if it doesn't, throw it right back on. So anyway, there we go. Um, really thought I was gonna get some major problem with this thing, but um, it seems like it fixed itself. I think uh, all I did was overfill the oil. So anyway, back to the setup, back to need to get this thing cleaned up around here because never know, might need to take it out of here. So, and it's been a while, I probably should run this. So yeah, let me go do that real quick. Let's get this out, let's get this back out and uh, get this thing, get some life into this thing because it has been sitting here for a while. So let's get it <laughs> warmed up and ready. Well, for the hundredth time, I think uh, that is truly it for this. We are getting up to three hour video here. This is crazy. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for preparing for winter so far. I guess we're waiting for the snow. There's a possible snowstorm for this weekend coming up. Um, so I'm excited this Saturday to call in for maybe a couple inches. So Rhino 2 here will probably get a chance. Maybe, maybe not, who knows. Um, but yeah, this could possibly be, be the end of this video. Who knows? Quick update on this though. Um, I got this shaft all lubed up. It was actually um, kind of rusted in there. And then I also switched the bracket around. So this is no longer up against here. Uh, so I 
took the bracket what used to be on this side put it on that side so much better i can pull it out to change the chute and push it back in when i don't need it so now it's way out here instead of being it was right against the cab here so yeah got that swip swapped flipped over and that is so much better probably would recommend that in the manual if it had one um so yeah got that all done very nice get that all tucked away and uh yeah so not much more to do so i will keep updating you as things come in um but you know once the snow hits that is it for this video which i'm excited i think everything is all good i think i'm gonna look at the oil in this get it changed if it needs it um you know everything's done over there so yeah this could be it so i'll catch you uh if it snows or with another update all right preparing for winter wow it is actually i can give you a date it is december 28th and it is raining out there it is what like 40 something degrees out it is crazy um i am not liking it it is not good for for this this year so <laughs> Yeah, um, preparing for winter here. I got a couple things came in for Rhino 2 here. So let's get those on. Um, I, I don't know if you saw if it was in this. Yes, I don't know if you saw in this clip um, or in a previous video, which will be coming out soon. I kind of did a little no-no. Um, I put on a bracket here that is for a Onan. So that bracket is meant for an Onan. And it, it bolted on, so I was like, oh, it must work. So I got the Onan cover, and to my surprise, it doesn't fit. So when it does line up with that, it doesn't make it on. So, but it does go on backwards. So if you do have an Onan cover laying around, let me see if this will even go on. Yep, there we go. So if you have an Onan cover, it will go on your Tecumseh engines backwards. Um, so something with the pulleys and everything are more that way. So when you put this on... It, the cover sits this way um but yeah a little life hack like if you're not running any attachments this is good to stay covered up like this like especially like running the plow here you don't really need the uh the cover on i mean i've seen people run the covers this way um uh, now i know why they run it this way because they probably have an onan cover on their tecumseh engine so it fits this way and it guards does everything so um let's get this this one off um with the bracket and everything, put this in stock, and then I will show you the one I bought for this. So this should be the cover, or the cover, the bracket. Yep, so here's the bracket. Hopefully that will work for our situation. So, sorry for the poor lighting. Let's see if we can change that. All right, is that better? So here's the, it's always missing the, the bushings, but that's okay. Yep, here's the bracket. Pretty good condition. And then this should be the cover. This should be the cover. Oh, it's double bagged. Oh. <laughs> double bagged. Sorry, there's my address is in here. Alright, now with my address out of the way. This should be the cover. Wow. Nicely packaged here. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at that paint. It's pretty much brand new. Nice. Looks like it's missing the, the thing there, but I have one that we can replicate it on. But wow, yeah, the paint's in really good condition. Um, so let's get the bracket. Make sure that it fits. It would be like that. Yep. Go right over. Nice. So hopefully, yep, yeah, hopefully that will work on uh, Rhino 2. But yeah, no, that looks like it's in great condition. Really cool. All right, so we're over here. Uh, I got the setup right here. Uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do this for a long time. I'm probably gonna take this, uh, this is what I was talking about, it's missing. So I'll probably take that off of this and put it on this one. Uh, but yeah, this is what I was talking about. You know, I've been meaning to meaning to do this for a long time. So I just uh, been pri uh, pri prioritizing um, other things. Um, so 
So now that I, I'm kind of out, out of the uh, tractors to buy, um, I, uh, I think I'm gonna focus on the little things, the little details, um, like PTO covers and uh, engine covers and paint and stickers and all that jazz. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with Rhino 2 here. I'm definitely going to give her a repaint job. She deserves it. Also, do some body work and stuff. The fenders are pretty banged up. And uh, the holes are all wallowed out, so we'll weld in some, some, uh, what do you ever, uh, washers to restore the uh, holes back to the original. So, again, I'm not sure if these brackets fit. I don't know if these 66 came with these PTO covers or not. So, I'm really not sure if they fit on here. If they ever came with them, I'm pretty sure. I mean, all Tecumseh engines are the same, right? So, I'm really not sure. We're both going to figure this out for ourselves. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, this will go fit up just fine. I figured, because, like, Tecumseh engine is a Tecumseh engine, right? So, figured it would work, and, uh, I'm trying to do these small details for for these tractors and and uh, you know do the little things. So especially I, I like I definitely want to do the little things for um, the tractors that I use daily. So like the 18, we'll get the love uh, Rhino two here. We'll get love, uh, Jerry is what I mean. Jerry and Rhino will definitely get the little details like this, a little love, um, because I use them, use them a lot. So kind of like my my daily daily driver, my daily tractor, the tractor that I use the most. So, but yeah, I will be narrowing down the uh, collection to just uh, a few of them. I don't really need um, all my all 16 or 17 of my tractors, so I'm just gonna do the ones that I love. So, and then this this looks really nice. Let's see if it fits on. Let's see if it works. Hopefully. Oh yeah. transferred over it's not really necessary um, this piece but um, I'm sure it's necessary when you're using the the cutter bar mower the rotary mower and the cutter bar mower so I'm sure this is uh, the cutter bar mower I'm sure that's the uh, what do you call that people are probably screaming out um, the sickle bar and the cutter bar oh I guess they're both cutter bar mowers the sickle bars and then the rotary mower, that's the the one underneath. So, I don't know. I do not know, why is that on there twice, the cutter bar mower? Why is that on there twice? Was there ever two of these? Huh, comment down below. <laughs> anyway, this is meant for Onan's, um, but it worked on there temporarily, so. <laughs> I used it, so, the inappropriate way, I guess. <laughs> used it backwards so yeah it's nice to know that there is a difference but you know it could have been a little life hack if you didn't if you had one of these with a Tecumseh engine around but yeah it sure doesn't work so anyway I'll put this in stock I actually think I have a few of them in stock for Onans so I need to buy up some Onans most of the Onans I buy come with them and most of the Tecumsehs I buy don't come with them so it's pretty crazy all right so I have been 
on the topic of PTO covers and uh, yeah, I uh, just changed out the one in Rhino 2 and I have this original Haven snow thrower manual and uh, I was like, huh, there probably is a procedure when it comes to um, the Haven snow throwers with the PTO covers. There's probably more to it, right? Um, so, you know, I got to flipping through here and I'm like, there's got to be more to it. There's probably a procedure. I, I mean, you read the outside of the PTO covers, it has a different position for a bolt. So I was just scrolling through here and yes, there's actually, um, a, a, it came with a kit with this bracket that bolts onto the PTO cover and a J hook. So it tells you right here, if you want to pause the video, and uh, yeah, it gets more into it over here. So yeah, it shows you how the belt goes with the J hook and the extra bracket on here when tightening the belt from the mule drive to the PTO. So I was like, I knew it. And I remember getting a bag from the other one, from the uh, nice Haven. Oh, dog wants to say hello. Um, and here it is. So here's the bracket, the J hook. It looks like this has never been used. It looks like it's still in the original bag. So J hook that they were referring to up here and the bracket. So yeah, that's really cool. I have it. I'm probably not going to install it, um, but I have one over here. So this is what it will look like without the J hook. Um, I happen to have uh, one of these brackets. I uh, just didn't have two J hooks. So I'm not sure if that's really important. I mean, I have been running it without this bracket altogether. But yeah, this is essentially what it's going to look like. I'm not sure what the whole thing is with it. Looks like it just supports the belt a little bit better. But since I have this spare bracket, um, the box that I bought the nice Haven in came with this and this, it looks like. Um, so I have it installed on this. We'll get it slapped onto the 18 and uh, see what you know what it does so i installed it just like it told you to um, especially over here it tells you exactly how to install it there so yeah installed it just how they they asked you to maybe i can replicate this j hook somehow um, maybe get a piece of that and thread it uh, but i want to keep this i mean somehow it made it this long without being opened so like if you look at it inside it is yeah look, brand new paint has never been used. Where is this one? You can tell it's been used and it's wearing away right there. So again, I'm going to uh, run it. It's telling you to do it in the manuals here. And I had a feeling that it had a special procedure on how to, to do it because it has all these little slots where it tells you where to put things. So that's why the hands are dirty. Went out there and grabbed it and got this installed and yeah. So I'll run it how they tell you. So there is more to it. I knew it. So I was on the whole Rhino 2, getting the, the PTO cover all ready for him. And uh, I knew there was going to be more to do with a uh, Haven. So I had a feeling, I had a feeling. So, and that's cool that I remember that it did come with a bag and I had no idea what this was used for at the time. And now I know what it's used for. So this bag is for your PTO cover. Anyway, back out here. Um, so yeah, got this here. I'm gonna tighten these bolts up and install it on here and see what it does. So I'm sure they you know, recommend that for a reason. All right, so got this bracket tightened down and uh, let's get it installed. So it goes on here like that. Make sure I lift that up. Sorry for my head being in the way. Get that on here. And yeah, that sure does do something. So yeah, that does keep that more straight, I guess. And then this would keep this from flopping up too high, but you know, the bracket itself will keep that. So yeah, that does keep it, does do something. <laughs> would you just believe that? So obviously they did that for a reason. Um, but yeah, so that did something. I wanted to make sure I did that properly, had that on there. So, actually, uh, no, yeah, do that. I kind of think you're, you're always gonna have the tracker going forward. So 
when it brushes up things, this will just push this on here. Um, if you put it on this way and you brush up against something, it could push it off. It's kind of my thought process there. If I can even get this on here, there we go. So, there we go. So yeah, that actually is, the belt's resting right on that. It seems like it would wear it out, but uh, if we put the, engage the pedal, yeah, it, it's not on it anymore. So, definitely need a new belt though. Um, I just haven't done that because it's a, it's a pain in the butt to get off, so. Disengage it, and it rests right on there. Cool. I'm glad I added that, that was cool. You know, I saw that in the manual and to reinsure it and everything, so yeah. Cool beans. Wasn't sure what it was for, so wanted to make sure that I, I added that, so. All right, what did you do? What did I do? You break it. Always. Now, I got this all back together. Look at that. Rear tank. Honestly, I think that's the only way to do it. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah. Honestly, it looked better with the, you know, legit strap. Yeah. But, you make do with what you have. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure I could find, like, one of those rubber, uh, straps, whatever those are called. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Bungees? Bungees. Yeah. <laughs> A rubber bungee. I have a few, actually. No, no, I like that. I think that's good. That's good. That's the only way to do it because you have to hang the, the nipple down. Yeah. Which it's all hung down right there. Yep. Runs underneath to a like little connector piece. Yeah, yeah. barb figure. Yeah, I see yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be all in depth from the video. Right? Mm -hmm. Bought two of these just you know, just in case we ever need another one. So you can connect both ends. Without having to run all new line. Which is fine, but, yeah, but you do you. It's a waste. Yeah. Because then you have that other line that you probably just throw away. Well, we could have used it. You could have, you know, you could have done a new line and we just keep that in stock. Because that would have fit. No, well, no, that, that I don't have any other. Loose. Yeah, I don't have any other plastic or metal thing. But yeah. anyway, does it start? Hopefully. I, mean, I let it run for a little. Yep. I had to use a little bit of choke, which I'll just use a little bit more choke just in case. No, I'm pretty sure you definitely need a new battery. Yeah, we'll get you a new battery. <laughs> Wouldn't think any so less of you. Remember, positive to negative and negative to positive. Around the nipple, like I did last time. Around the tit. Right on the... Right on the tit. Right on the tit. Put the engine start. I'm gonna get a boosted box or whatever. Those little pack, jump pack. Work. Jump packs. Actually, probably jump oh, that's definitely, that's definitely not on there all the way. Give her good wiggles. Definitely not on all the way. Come on, connect that. Yeah, can I, yeah, oh yeah, yep, that's on there. You know, when you're here, this all. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> here, let's unplug it and plug it back in. There it goes. I was gonna say, yeah, 
I thought it broke the light because I was showing my brother them and I like flicked them on real quick, flipped them off, and then they wouldn't come back on, or just like that. Oh, you gotta have the switch on. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but the switch was on, but it wasn't actually turning on because oh. there wasn't enough juice. But this one turned oh. on. It was probably well. This one has a real life, so maybe it gets juiced up by that. I don't. I don't know how that works. That thing's nice. What? That? Yeah. I don't know. And it's aimed perfectly. Oh, my bootstrap. That is aimed perfectly, too. Yeah. Well, there's the update on uh, Larry. <laughs> Larry. It runs. It's going to blow Larry up first no storm. No. No, it'll probably last you all year. Oh, uh, speaking of, we should probably check the oil. Yeah, now that you've been fucking rant, rump. Rump. Hey, every time I get this thing running, I do the... <laughs> Oh, you hear my brother's truck now? That's pretty good. TRD Pro exhaust? Yeah. Wow, you already know. How do you know? 
the other thing. Yeah. But it actually does sound pretty good now. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Perfect. A little, a little old looking, but look, it's to the line. Uh, you know what? You it's never fun. do an oil change on these because you never want to open up a new hole. I did that to Rhino, too. I did an oil change. Should have seen the front of it. Leaking. Water fountain of oil. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why you never do. <laughs> These things have been through their paces. You leave the old oil. You just pop it off. Yeah. So with this, I have to. This gets mounted here, and then the other part goes to this. So I need to. I have the other piece. I just. Didn't leave me unmotivated. But hey, that's things, what it is. Meant. But now it works. Yes. And runs. Are you happy? Oh my god. There's oh, a, hey, you take this back now. Yeah, there's a bracket there. After we install that bracket, the seat, and everything. Mm. Now that we don't need the bracket or seat. Yeah. <laughs> that portion of it. All right, you happy? She done. Yeah, it's ready for winter. Yeah, winter's not ready for us. So. Hey, you know, just because it's December. <laughs> Literally the last day of December. 30th. Tomorrow is then, yeah. Today, just because today's December 30th. And yeah, we it's don't 40 have degrees snow. out. <laughs> And we've had rain for the last three days when we usually have like snow. Yeah. Doesn't mean global warming. No, it's just El Nino. Yeah. All right, so the project at hand right now is to deal with the SS18's wheels. Um, I think I have a pretty cool tire setup coming here for the spring, maybe even halfway through the winter. But for the time being, these chains are not on here correctly. Um, I'm going to pop off the whole wheel and tire and chain, take all the weights off and, uh, kind of show you there's a big, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That looks like the, the big spots on the bottom. So each link has a spacing, a set spacing, and these chains are pretty messed up when we put them on. So there's a dead spot where it's missing like four links right here just a big dead spot two of these and it's a flat spot so when you're rolling you go coom do 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 coom do 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 coom so um i didn't put the chains on properly and there's actually a little bit of a life hack that um, a, a dude on facebook kind of taught me so i kind of want to try that out and see how well it works and you know change the future of me putting tire chains on so let's go right to a quick time lapse of taking off the tensioner wheel weights um, I'll keep the chains on so I can show you the dead spot and then the wheel so let's get right into that <laughs> So here's my chain setup, and right here is this big spot, and they're all tangled. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the big bump that we were hearing, and uh, yeah, not uh, not great. So let's put these on properly. Um, I did have these all nice and. Tied up nicely. All right, so let's take these chains off. Fairly simple process. Um, if you've never done this before, not hard. 
sometimes hard to get off though. There you go. But essentially there's a lock that tightens them. So yeah, these got tangled somehow. Um, so yeah, I think I just untangled them there. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is the guy told me, let the air out. So might be a common trick for you guys, something you've heard of, even maybe done before. Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't work for you. Quite frankly, I'm not sure how much to let out or not, so. I'm gonna do it all. Let's see, I have another set of chains that I want to try. These are ideal. I always try to make sure that they're relatively straight. So they're a little floppy and that's what these springs would help do. But let's try airing it up. and see if that take, helps take the slack out of it. A little bit. I gotta see what these are rated for. <clears throat> All right, well, I definitely tightened them up a little bit, but I don't know. It's not as great as I thought it would be.
that was a lot of work for something that, that was supposed to be easy. Took 30, but a little under 30 minutes, but we have much better chains on there now. So that spring isn't as effective anymore. It's not as tight. So we might have to do the chains that it came with, with these. These chains came with uh, with this style without the, the hook. Yeah, these are way better. Way tighter. All right. All right, so with that being said, I am very happy with the new tire chains on here. I think they are just way better. I think these chains over here are actually for a smaller wheel, maybe a 21 or a 20, whereas these are 23s. So these tire chains are definitely meant for this. So I'm very happy, no more flat spot in the chains and uh, yeah, it rides so much smoother. And I think I have the correct PSI in there now. So um, it definitely sits up in the rear much better now. I think actually the cab looks pretty level. So <laughs> I, I guess I neglected the uh, air and the tires and everything. So this is perfect. This the, uh, Jerry, the SS18 snowblower rig is perfect. And Rhino, the plow rig is perfect. So I think this is it. Um, I am very happy with everything. I, uh, yeah, I, I think we're good here. I think preparing for winter is coming to an end. So with that being said, I think we are coming to the end of preparing for winter. I think one of the things I want to do and I want to ask you is tires. So I want to get a whole new tire set up on these rigs. I want to switch it up. Um, I think this 818 here, Jerry, is going to be a dedicated snowblower rig. So I'm, I'm curious what I want to do. I either want to do an aggressive ag tire or a, um, yeah, aggressive ag tire or an aggressive um, turf saver. So one of the two. So, um, you know, ag tires are aggressive. They're not really meant to be on the lawn. And um, the aggressive ag tires are for like muddy grass areas. They don't chew up the lawn, but they have the chance to. Um, I'm really not sure yet. I'm gonna jump jump up on tire size. So the rear is 23, like I mentioned. I'll probably bump up to a 24 ag or a 24 um, aggressive uh, turf saver. Uh, the fronts are 16. I'm gonna go up to an 18, eight, eight or eight and a half, eight. Um, so regardless, it's a 16, six and a half by eight right now. So we'll jump up a tire size there, but I don't know. Let me know down below what you think about tires and what I think or what I should run for tires. Um, I definitely wanna do an ag tire setup all the way around, probably do that on the loader or something that's not gonna be on the lawn. So anyway, let me know down below what you think I should do for tires. I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna ponder the idea. The time this video comes out, I won't even be considering tires. So I'll definitely wait for your comments if you so choose. So with that being said, I am done here. The next clip in this video is going to be the snow montage leading us to the plowing shorts so thank you for watching i know it's a three hour long video hopefully you guys enjoyed that long video if not definitely let me know down below and i won't do this again but yeah that's it thank you for watching thank you for the winter finally being here and we can end this video so with that being said hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully you liked and subscribe and we'll catch you guys in the next vlog day